First question this week comes from a nail professional in Cornwall, United Kingdom. I was wondering if you could settle an argument between myself and another tech. Should you mix different brands of monomer and powder? Are there any risks other than the potential for service breakdown? As this nail pro has already identified, when the incorrect powder is used with a monomer liquid, then service breakdown can become an issue. Even so, there are more important problems that can, be de that can develop when the incorrect powder is used. If you looked at these powders under a microscope, you would see that they're made of millions of tiny solid polymer spheres that are coated on the outside with various ingredients. Mixing these with a the monomer liquid causes a chemical reaction that hardens them into a polymer coating with great durability. The monomer liquid is more important to the final properties of the nail coating, but the polymer powder is also extremely important. I'd estimate that about 70% of the properties come from the monomer liquid and 30% from the polymer powders. These powders are not interchangeable between different company brands, and there is no such thing as a universal powder that works with all brands of monomer liquid. Interestingly, when it comes to the individual powder particles themselves, it's important to understand three different things. First, what's inside the particle. Second, what the outer surface is like. And third, what things are attached to the powder particle's outer surface. All three of these are important to the final enhancement. The inside of the particle powder, powder particle it determines its strength. These particles must be strong enough to resist cracks and keep them from spreading. That's a main function of each powder particle, to act as a crack arrester to stop tiny cracks from quickly spreading and joining to create larger cracks. Without the powder, cracks would easily join together and cause the enhancement to quickly break. When there are too few of these powder particles in enhancement or the nail coating, breakage is much more likely to occur. The surface of each particle is even more important. The particle surface determines much of its workability and its compatibility with the monomer liquid. In other words, the outer surface determines how easily the powder can be picked up to create a bead. Also, how well the mixture will flow when it's brushed, or if it will stay in place where you put it. And the ease with which the surface will self-level, as well as the final surface smoothness and shine. All of these are controlled largely by how well the powder particle's surface interacts with the monomer liquid. If they don't interact well, many of these properties will be diminished. Additives that adhere to the surface of these particles also provide, perform some functions. For one, they can prevent yellowing, uh, they can improve brightness of the enhancement, or they can ensure better coverage. But the most important of these additives is an ingredient called benzoyl peroxide, which is often shortened to BPO. Benzoyl peroxide is the same acne-fighting ingredient which millions of teenagers have applied to their faces over the last 60 years. In acne creams, BPO is used up to 10% concentration. In nail powders, it's usually used at between 1 and 2%. Now, interestingly, there is a very big difference between a powder containing 1% BPO and one containing 2% BPO. It may not sound like a big difference, but it is. 2% BPO powders have twice as much BPO as a 1%. While the ingredients found in the monomer liquid itself control how fast the coating will cure, the amount of BPO in the powder determines how completely the liquid monomer will cure. That's very important for nail professionals to understand. Too little BPO and the enhancement can undercure. Too much BPO and the enhancement will overcure. Overcuring can lead to discoloration, especially yellow. It can cause brittleness cracking, breaking, chipping, and loss of adhesion or lifting. 
These are all the classic signs of service breakdown. And of course, nobody wants these kind of problems with their nails, but undercuring is an even more important issue which must be avoided. Undercured nail coatings also have service breakdown. For instance, they could have lower resistance to staining, or be overly flexible with having increased cracking at the stress zone near the side walls of the free edge. But more importantly, undercoated, undercured nail coatings are more likely to cause adverse skin reactions for clients and nail professionals. I believe, in fact, that undercuring is one of the leading causes of skin irritation and allergies to nail products in general, including UV cured nail coatings. Undercured enhancements contain excessive amounts of uncured ingredi ingredients. In this case, or I should say in the case of these two part systems, undercured nail coatings contain excessive amounts of monomer, and their fresh dust and filings are rich in monomer. Prolonged or repeated contact to monomer-rich dust and filings may lead to skin overexposure, which is the leading cause of allergy to nail enhancement products. When prolonged and or repeated exp uh, skin exposure is avoided, allergic reactions become highly unlikely. This explains why it's so important to keep your arms from laying on dust and filings, and to avoid repeatedly contacting the backs of the arms, hands, or neck. Uh, the back of the hands, I should say, or your arms or your neck with these, uh, with these filings and dust. When properly cured, these aren't going to contain excessive amounts of monomer, and they become very unlikely to cause adverse skin reactions. There are two main ways to cause undercuring. The most common is to make a bead that contains too much monomer liquid and not enough powder. The amount of powder that's picked up to form the bead determines the amount of benzoyl peroxide in that bead. Use too little powder and there will, be not, will not be enough benzoyl peroxide for a proper cure. What's the right amount or the proper amount of powder for a bead? The right amount contains is a bead that will be of a medium consistency and holds its own shape. Never use a runny or a wet consistency bead. Also, never brush pure monomer onto the enhancement. This injects extra monomer into the enhancement, which leads to undercuring. If you don't use the, the right powder, in fact, if you use an incorrect powder, it likely doesn't contain the correct amount of benzoyl peroxide. What do I mean by the incorrect powder? A powder that was not specifically designed to be used with your monomer liquid. A 1% BPO powder can undercure a monomer liquid designed for use with a 1.5% BPO powder. Even a half a percent difference can lead to undercuring, especially in the first hour. That's why it's important to avoid prolonged and repeated exposure to fresh filings and dust. Differences as small as a quarter of a percent BPO in combination with beads that are too wet is enough to create monomer-rich filings and dust. This is why I'm opposed to the so-called universal powders. I mean, what's that all about? Why sell a powder to cure another company's monomer liquid? It doesn't make any sense. Unless they just want to sell powder to as many nail pros as they can. In my opinion, it's wrong for one company to tell nail professionals to misuse another company's products. These are two-part systems that should be used as directed. I advise all nail professionals to, one, use only the powder that was designed for the monomer liquid you use. Two, always use a medium consistency bead, never wet or runny. Three, never use monomer without polymer. Four, avoid prolonged and or repeated skin contact with fresh filings or dust. Five, avoid skin contact with any uncured nail coating products, including liquid monomer, UV, gel coat, uh, UV gels, or UV manicure products. Once these are properly cured, they're very unlikely to cause adverse skin reactions. So use them wise and use them well.